guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited for today's product review because this is one of those things where I set an alarm on my phone as to when this product was gonna launch. I was online the minute it launched so I could purchase these items and these are the new ColourPop Cosmetics Crystal Collection and you might be aware that they came out with four collections and two of them were meant for oily skin and two of them for dry skin. They came out with setting sprays, priming sprays, lip balms, uh, and I think this like highlighting liquid thing. I logged on the minute it launched, even though it was in the middle of the workday, just to pick up actually the priming and setting sprays for oily skin. And so I logged on, I had the two in my cart, somebody dropped by my office and we chatted for a couple of minutes and when I came back to the sale, the priming and setting sprays were sold out. So I did the next logical thing which was just buy the bundle because why not so today i have two bundles to be sharing and testing with you guys and let's get straight to it okay so the two bundles i have to share with you guys are the amethyst collection and the adventurine collection i think that's how you pronounce it but in every collection you have a either a priming or a setting spray, you have a highlighting liquid, and you have a lip balm. And they call this their crystal collection because I guess there's like actual crystals grounded up in here. So first of all, the packaging for these, and these are the two collections that I got, the Adventuring in Green and the Amethyst in Purple. They come in really pretty packages. I mean, th there's like embossing on the package and there's like actual glitter where the gold is. And so this is very high-end packaging in my opinion. And so we're gonna crack open these boxes and show you what's inside. Okay, so the first item from the collections I want to share with you guys are the priming and setting sprays because this is like the whole reason I bought the bundles in the first place. So the amethyst one looks like this, and this is the priming spray for oily skin, and the adventuring one looks like this, same packaging, and it is the setting spray for oily skin. And they do not have ingredient labels on here, but on the cartons they actually say that, you know, it contains real like amethyst crystals or adventuring crystals. And my first impression is they could have filled these up just a little bit more. I realize that it's really affordable. I think they're only like six to eight dollars separately, but there's like a lot of headspace in there that they could have done a lot with. However, I am really impressed that these bottles are glass. Like, I don't think I have seen a setting spray or priming spray that is actually packaged in glass. So next I want to talk about the crystal liquid highlighters and that's what they call them. They are in a similar size like glass jar. These are a little bit smaller but still glass so still very impressive. These do not have like the spray spout so these have like the squeeze spouts. Kind of like what foundation, like liquid foundation spouts are packaged in and this one just has a little bit of a purple glow to it and this one has a little bit of a green glow to it and the instructions say that you can use it as like an actual highlighter or you can use it like mixing in your foundation to give you like a, a nice glow being an oily person i will never mix highlighter into my foundation i don't think you could ever convince me to do so but i will be using these as highlighter when we get to the testing part and i will swatch it for you too uh before i put it on my face so for the lip balms, they come in a lipstick type tube and it feels pretty heavy, so it feels kind of high end. The actual tubes themselves are matte, but they are just like lipsticks or lip balms. And if you look really closely, I don't know if you can see it from the lighting, but it is like a little holographic lip balm that I'm really excited to try. I don't know how I feel about this green uh, Aventurine one, but this purple one looks so beautiful. So we'll swatch both of them here in a second, but we are going to now start testing the products. So for priming and setting sprays, I would really like to see how these make a difference on my face. So I'm actually going to do half of my face with both the priming spray and the setting spray, and the other side of my face without either of these products, and check in in a couple of hours to see kind of if they've made a difference on my skin or no. So. We're going to jump straight into that. So with the priming spray, I'm going to start with this amethyst one. And I'm just going to use this spray only on the right side of my face. So right away, the priming spray does not really smell like much. It doesn't really have an odor to it. So I'm just going to wait for this to dry before I put my foundation on. Okay, so for the sake of time, I'm going to just run through my makeup and we'll check back in when I'm ready for a highlighter and lip balm. Okay. 
Okay, so I've got most of my face on, just going with something very natural and kind of everyday look going right now. I'm going to swatch both the highlighters for you and then we can decide on which one we like. So first we're going to be doing this amethyst one and I'm just going to try to put a little bit of that on to the back of my hand. Oh my gosh, you guys. Look at how pretty this is. So comparing that to the Adventurine one, the bottle also says to shake it, and I forgot to do that with the Amethyst one. So this is the Adventurine one, and we're just going to spread that out a little bit with our finger. You guys, these are so pretty! So I'm actually going to go with the green Adventurine one, just because I'm feeling a little bit cooler today. It's so shimmery, you guys! I'm so excited for this! Oh my goodness. This is so extra! Okay, so these blend super well and they are super shimmery. Like, I would literally never use this in my foundation because I did not even use that much and it's already like... Ah! Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and swatch both the lip balms for you. So this one is the Amethyst one. It looks like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and swatch this one. That is the Adventurine one, and it's definitely got a bit of a green sheen to it, which is also really pretty. I think if you put that over the right lip color, that would be super pretty. By the way, you guys, it kind of smells like vanilla cocoa butter. Like, it smells really nice. So I'm going to skip lip color and just use the balms as they are, just because I want to see how they show up on, like, naked lips. I'm going to be using the Amethyst color because, you guys, come on. I feel like the Adventurine doesn't even compare. Like, this purple is so pretty. So right away, you guys, it is, like, really opaque. It is a lot more opaque than I thought it would be. Uh, so much so that I don't think I actually like wearing it alone. I think it's a little bit patchy and like the color is congregating on like certain parts of my lips. And I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of that. The lip balm does truly feel like a lip balm. Like it almost feels like chapstick kind of. So I feel like it's got no staying power, which it's advertised lip, lip balm. So I totally understand. Okay, so the setting spray is the Adventurine one. You guys, Nikki Tutorials said that if you fan your setting spray right after you spray it, you don't get as many spots. So this is where I learned it from. Okay, so that completes kind of the look. Uh, this side has both the setting and priming spray, and this side does not have either. Note that I did not set or bake anything on my face today, just because I really wanted to test out like what the setting and priming sprays would do for my face. Now that I have my face on, I'm going to try to lean forward here, but I don't feel like I can see a difference in the finishes yet. But I feel like my skin is currently the same on both sides. It is about 2.15 right now in the afternoon, and so I am sure I have plenty of errands to run or things to eat, and so I'm going to go do that. I'm going to check back in in a couple of hours and kind of show you guys the comparison between the two sides. See you guys later! Okay, so I am back. It's been about seven hours since I've had the makeup on my face. It had not been an extraordinary hot or humid day, and I was only outside for dinner, so we went out for dinner and sat on a patio for a couple of hours, and it was not in a sunny area. If I lean forward, you can kind of see that my face is a little oily, uh, like I usually do get after seven hours, even if I just stay indoors all day, I still get oily. But I cannot tell actually a difference between the two sides of my face. So this is the side that had both the priming spray and the setting spray. And then this side had none. Uh, so neither the priming spray or the setting spray. And as far as like oiliness, I feel like I'm still very oily on both sides. Like it does not work as well as like a setting powder would. If you look really close, which I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but I think my foundation has separated a little bit less on the side with the priming spray, so I think there was like a little bit of progress there. I did also wipe off the Amethyst Lip Balm uh, just like an hour after I put it on when I first put my face on because it, the purple was not working for me and it was a lip balm, so it was already starting to rub off. So. Right before I came back, I actually uh, put on Frick and Frack from ColourPop and then layered the Amethyst lip balm over it, and that worked really well. I really like that 
it made like my matte liquid lipstick. I guess it's a satin finish, but it, it looks matte without the lip balm. Once I put the lip balm on, it, it does have like a really nice finish and I do like it for that purpose. However, when you do use the lip balm over like a lip color, it does transfer onto the lip balm and then you have to wipe it off so you're losing product that way. I don't think it's such a huge deal because it does give you like a really nice finish. So final thoughts, I would say out of the priming spray, which is the amethyst, and the setting spray, which is Aventurine, that were both made for oily skin, the priming spray did a little bit for me because I felt like my foundation didn't separate quite as bad on the side that I had it on. But the setting spray didn't really work for me. Like this is nowhere as good as like your Urban Decay setting sprays, uh, which I do like, but this did not help my oiliness. Like I'm still really greasy and oily after about seven hours and I wasn't really even out in the sun. So uh, it is kind of comparable to the side that I didn't even set with powder. So I would recommend the priming spray if you're really curious. Setting spray, I feel like you could skip, especially if you have oily skin. As for the highlighting liquids, I feel like these are a really good buy. So I think they're like $8 or so on their own if you don't get them in a set. And there is like 25 milliliters in here. So it's a pretty big bottle if you're using it only to highlight. Like I feel like if I keep using like a drop of this on each side of my cheek as a highlighter, these bottles will literally last me forever. If you're using this to mix in your foundation, which like you see how shiny I am, I would never do that. Uh, you might run through this a little bit faster, but I really do like the packaging of both this and the setting sprays because like the glass is really high end and it feels really nice. Uh, you might just have to be a little bit more careful if you are traveling with them. And they are a, a good travel size, so you can bring it on an airplane if you put it in those quart size bags. Lastly, the lip balms. So this is the amethyst one again. And this one I had to wipe off because some of my lip color transferred. And the adventurine one. I think you just have to keep in mind with these that they are truly a lip balm. So they're not going to last even as long as a lipstick. Like the moment you eat or wipe your lips, they will come off. I would also not recommend wearing these solo. I mean, you know, if you like that look, that's great. I just think that it was a little bit too bright and too opaque for me. And I wasn't a big fan of that, but I really am digging it on top of this freaking frack. I think if you have liquid lipsticks that are matte and they're really drying, like some brands out there are really drying, and you put this over it, I feel like that would fix that problem for you. But I don't know what that means in terms of like transferability. Like it, would that make your lip color transfer more readily? Those are my final thoughts. I think there were some items that were a hit and some items that were a miss. But overall, I do not regret picking up the bundles. If you guys have tried the rose quartz one, and I don't even remember what the other one is called now. There's like a blue one. If you guys have tried the other two bundles, please drop me a note and let me know how those are. I know they're made for dry skin, so let me know if that works for you. But if you have also picked up these collections, let me know if they work for you, especially if you have oily skin. I know different products work different on everybody, so it'd be interesting to hear kind of what your experiences are versus mine. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. That's all I have for you guys today. Have a great rest of the week, and I will see you next time. Bye!